Hey everybody, it's Aaron with Kidder Music Service back in the repair shop. First off, we want to congratulate all of you that have decided to take your next step and join band. That's fantastic. We want to point out some things that we've seen over the years. The do's and don'ts could damage it, cause frustration, and cause you to maybe quit. Things that you can do at home to keep your instrument playing well. Here is a Kidder Music Mantle clarinet. Uh, there's some great items in here uh, that are included. You got a nice little swab, a reed, and some cork grease. As you can see with the clarinet, there's not a lot of extra room in the case. Usually there's enough space here to keep your cleaning items, your reeds, and your stuff like that. But again, there's no room for the book, so don't try to cram your book in there. A bunch of cloths, you know. You don't want to take the, the cloth and lay it over the top and close the case, because again, there's not tons of room. I've seen this, and this is really good. If you take your cloth, stick it in your bell, and close it nice and easy. But again, you don't want to put anything on top of the clarinet. It's going to cause these keys to bend and it's going to be very frustrating. Let's take a look at a couple of these items. Uh, let's talk about cork greasing your clarinet. There are two corks on the upper joint. There's one cork on the bottom joint and there's a cork on the mouth. We've seen a lot of either people that have over corked, over greased their cork, over corked their grease. <laughs> They've over greased their cork or they don't use cork grease at all. If you don't use cork grease, it's going to be a bigger problem. The clarinet's going to stick together or you'll rip these tendons off. These are just cork. It's very easy for it to break. Mmm, cork. So what you want to do is you want to take your cork grease and you just want to apply a little dab. All right, you know, I don't go all the way around. I just put a little dab on then I take my finger. I just kind of smear it in. Going around the instrument. Okay. Now if you got any extra, if you got a paper towel handy or you're cleaning your eyes. And then you can just slide it on. It shouldn't be hard, but it should be firm because you don't want things to bad just like start falling apart off in the middle. You're gonna grab your paper towel and you're just gonna wipe off this excess. I would grease your tendons every time you use it. 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 Because it. 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 it will dry out very quickly. You wanna do it on the same as the upper joint. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna go into our speed phone. And you want to do it on your upper tendons as well. And again, should be firm to put together so then it stays together. Same thing with the barrel. <laughs> the tendon corks are what keep the instrument together. Again, if the corks are dry or broken, your instrument's going to fall apart, going to hit the ground, it's going to break. If the tendon corks do break, you can bring them into Kidder Music and we can replace them. Generally, we could do it while you wait, just these tendon corks. It doesn't take long, say a half an hour time. With a rental instrument, the replacement of the tendon corks are covered as part of your rental agreement. All of your rental instruments that you get here through Kidder Music uh, come with a cleaning shampoo. It collects the moisture after you get done playing it. So I have mine open here. And it's got a little string on it. And after you get done playing it, you basically drop the, the little metal part through and you just run and that'll clean out the inside. With the upper joint you have to be careful because if you can look down inside there, see the little metal piece hanging from the top? That's the chimney. And what can happen is sometimes things can get caught on that chimney. But with this little cloth, it should make it through just fine. Now with the hanky, you're going to do this a little bit differently than you will with sham the chamois. Notice the size difference. There's a significant size difference between the two. Again, both are great products to use. With the clear, the hanky, on both of these, what I do is I don't necessarily put it all the way through. I wait until I see this part come through, and then I'll pull it back through the other way. Again, that's to make sure it doesn't get stuck, especially with the upper joint. Again, remember, the little chimney in there. This cloth will get stuck on that chimney, and then pretty soon it'll break off. If you try to pull all the way through, it'll get stuck on that chimney, and pretty soon you're gonna be pulling and pulling and pulling, and then you don't know what to do, and then you're gonna panic. Next step is to go to dad or grandpa or mom and go, hey, I can't get this out, it's stuck, and then pretty soon. <laughs> muscle power. And now what you've done is you've created bends within the keys. Pulling it this way is you've made it harder to do. Again, try to pull the other way. If it doesn't pull easily, that's when you bring it into us. Because we can do it in a way where it won't bend the keys, it won't cause damage to the instrument, you won't get it all marred up. You may have to buy a new hanky, but it's a lot better to spend just a few bucks on a hanky than have to replace or get anything repaired on this uh, time away from playing your instrument. With the big hanky, and we'll do it again because this is kind of the big one where it gets stuck, especially on this upper joint. Pull it through, so about two or three inches come out. Pull it back the opposite direction that you came in. With the bell, you just take your hanky and you just kind of run your fingers 
just wipe it out inside. Same thing with the barrel, because the barrel is going to be where most of the moisture collects. Just wipe it out. And those will be good. You could put this through if you wanted. If it starts to be tight as you're pulling it, if you start to notice resistance, just go ahead and pull it back the other way and you'll be all right. Take your reed off while your mouthpiece is ready. Put it in the reed guard and you put your reed guard in the case. Put your mouthpiece, put the cap on. And that allows everything to dry out. Always a good plan to have a couple of reeds. There's backup reeds. Um, and you want to rotate your reeds out. We've seen reeds that look like this, that basically look like termites have gotten a hold of it. And this is not going to help you play very good. What happens is it's because you're in a hurry and you just throw your mouth and you the okay. So your reed's going to break. You don't want this reed. This reed can be thrown away. That's why you want to have extra reeds on hand. And like in the ideal world, um, I think it's great if you can always take your reed off after you're done playing. If you leave your reed on, it'll start to stick. Like. You take the ligature off and the reed would still be stuck on there. All that moisture that's on the reed, or in the mouthpiece, you're not causing the, the reed to, to warp, causing the reed to stick to the mouthpiece. They do have this great product to get their body savers or pad savers. What they basically do is there's a, a long one and a short one. They rest inside the instrument when you're not playing. So when you're done playing, you put one in the upper joint, you put one in the lower joint, put your instrument in the back of the case, and it helps collect all that moisture and help keep these keys from sticking so much. There's also one that is, is designed for the inside of the mouthpiece. You want to take your reed off before you put that in because if you push it through, it's going to damage your reed. So take your reed off, put that little, little mouthpiece saver swab in. It's going to help collect all that moisture and keep your mouthpiece clean. You can buy a care kit. Uh, this is the Super Slick care kit. Inside the care kit, it's got the directions, if you can see them, it's a very small print. It tells you what e each item is. It's got the practice record, hanky in there. This is a mouthpiece brush. So take warm soapy water, you take the brush, and you basically scrub it out, and that helps get all that all that moisture build up. Or you know, some of you may have band after lunch. Think about that one, and that helps get all that dirt and grime out of there. You don't want to use it on any part of the body because what'll happen is you'll get it stuck down in there, and then you've got a big problem. It also comes with this little brush here with the pads that are closed. Over time, there may get some lint. Get underneath the pads and you can kind of clean up these little spots uh, and get that dirt out of there. And just help maintain the instrument a little bit nicer. They do come with this nice little reed guard. Keeps the reed protected from any damage. Comes with a tube of cork grease and it comes with the miniature golf pencil that you get when you go play miniature golf or golf courses. These are some of the items that are that are inside the care kit that you can use to help maintain your instrument. Fingerprints on the keys, just a little polishing cloth. There's another great product here at Kenner Music is our polishing cloth. And you just kind of wipe off. You have oils and hands just naturally, and they can cause some discoloration over time. And if that's important to you, you want to make sure that you wipe off your fingerprints occasionally just to keep the keys nice and shiny. Everybody likes shiny keys. But some of the cases are designed where the mouthpiece and the barrel are close enough together and there's no divider in between. So what we see when an instrument comes in, it'll be stuck like that. Uh, this is bad to do. And the reason this is bad is because what'll happen is they'll get stuck together because all that moisture and the cork grease will actually kind of bond to the barrel. Cork will compress over time. The more you use it, it'll start to shrink. It'll end up going through cork faster. Take the time, take it apart. Separate the two items. They have time to, to air out and don't ever leave anything together. I understand how convenient it is. You don't want to create more damage. Now, there are two different types of clarinet. There's the plastic clarinet or the resin clarinet and the wood clarinet. There's a couple different ways to tell. Sometimes it's very obvious. You can see the grain of the wood where this has a nice shiny finish. If you look down the inside of the instrument, you might be able to see, and I don't know if you can, you can see the reflection of the light and how shiny it is inside. That's telling me that this is plastic. Do the same thing with the wood clarinet you'll see all the grains of the wood on the inside. It doesn't have that clear, smooth surface, so this is telling me this is a wood clarinet. Most of the care for the wood clarinet is the same. There's one major difference here. With the temperature changes in the, in the summer and in the winter, wood does different things. Uh, it expands and it contracts. In the summer, with all the moisture in the air, the wood has a tendency to kind of expand, get bigger. As it gets colder and we get into the winter months, the wood actually dries up. What we suggest is in the winter months, using a product is called boar oil. We have boar oil here at Kinder Music. What you want to do, and I have boar oil that's in this little 
baby food jar. Kind of tough to say, I'd say at least once a week. Sometimes you can tell because the wood will actually start to change color. It'll look dried out. Take a little bit of this more on, take a paper towel, dab it in, or maybe a tough to see, but I've got a little bit on the end and you can see how it's starting to get shiny as I apply it. Now, you don't want to like coat it on, you don't want to pour the whole thing, but you want to get it on there so that the wood will start to soak up this bore oil and get inside the body. Right, and you want to try to get under the keys as best as you can. Again, it's going to be a little hard, and that's okay, but any little bit that you get on there is definitely going to be helpful. And then what I do is I let it sit for a little bit. It sat for a little bit, I'll come back with another paper towel, and you just want to wipe off any excess. You should be able to see the difference on how shiny that wood is with the oil on. And that helps keep the wood from cracking because if it dries out, it's gonna crack. You're gonna get a split down the center. You want an oil bell in the barrel as well. In time, these rings will start to get loose. If you don't, and they'll fall off. You can oil in the summer as well. It's not bad. You probably won't have to do it as often just because there's more moisture in there. That's just the little bit of difference between the plastic. With the plastic, you don't have to oil it. You don't have to use the bore oil. Plastic so it doesn't expand and contract as the seasons change. Any questions, I'll be in my office. No.